Hi, I'm Neil Sperry. Welcome to Our Home Landscape. We're really happy to have you as our guest today. What you're about to see is a visual message that's dedicated at helping you have the best in Texas lawn grass. And I'm especially pleased to tell you that it is sponsored by Purcell Industries, the folks who bring us Polyon Encapsulated Fertilizers, the state of the art in time to release lawn foods. The Purcell industry folks have some wonderful fertilizers. Many of them come in the Greens Coat line. You'll find something for every season. It's a four-step process. Let's start early in the year with Greens Coat Team. This is a great way to keep weeds out of your lawn. Late January and February is your ideal time to catch these pesky grassy weeds off guard before they germinate. One application of Team pre-emergent weed control will prevent crabgrass and other grassy weeds before they germinate. Now when the weather warms up, so does your turf grass. Come springtime, apply Greenscoat Weed and Feed with Trimene for safe, effective control of broadleaf weeds while feeding your lawn with quality, slow-release polyon nitrogen. It's the simple way to fertilize your lawn and kill invading weeds in one easy application. Continue to fertilize in late spring using Greenscoat Premium Texas Turf Food. The 15-5-10 analysis is the ratio recommended by turf experts at Texas A&M and Greenscoat meets the requirements of A&M's Don't Bag It program. Again, look for the Polyon Diamond to be assured of 15 weeks of quality, slow-release feeding. And then finally, don't neglect an application of Winterizer 18612 from late August through September. It's a critical time for your lawn, and Winterizer, now with Polyon-coated potassium, will protect the turf through the coming winter. That's Purcell Industries and the Greenscoat Lawn Care Products, a great and winning team for Texas turf. The grass family is the largest plant family in all of the world. And with all of those members in that big plant family, you establish a list of criteria. What does it take to make a really good turf grass? Well, let's make that list. First of all, it has to be dense and spreading, otherwise it's no good as a lawn grass. It needs to be easy to plant, easy to get started, and fairly inexpensive. It certainly needs to be adapted to your soils and to your climate, and most especially, it needs to be relatively pest free. Well, luckily here in Texas, we're blessed with several grasses that meet all of those criteria. Common Bermuda grass is our most common lawn grass in Texas. You can plant it from seed, so it's fairly inexpensive, although you can also start it from sod. You can use all kinds of weed killers on it, so weeds need be no problem in Bermuda grass. If you have a little more shade, though, St. Augustine may fit your bill better. And especially if you're in the southern half of the state, Raleigh St. Augustine is very well adapted. If you want the ultimate in picture-perfect lawn grasses, the hybrid Bermudas that are used on golf courses would be the very best of all of them. However, their very high-maintenance lawn grass is suited only for those folks who like to spend lots of time in their landscape. The zoysias are coming to the forefront. We have a wide assortment of zoysias that are adapted. They're rather slow-growing. You need to see zoysias and make sure that's exactly what you want before you start. For those who like them, they're absolutely ideal. In many respects, zoysias are intermediate to St. Augustine and Bermuda in their shade tolerance and their textures. Buffalo grasses have really caught the eye in the last few years. The varieties like 609 and Prairie are improved varieties that don't put up the unsightly seed heads, so they're very desirable. They're well adapted in sun and they're very drought tolerant. And finally, the fescues in the northern parts of Texas. Fescues are cool season grasses that are planted from seed in the fall. They look great in the shade. If you're not too hot in your part of the state, fescues can do very well for you even in sunny locations. Now, a lot of us like to overseed our lawns during the winter time, especially if we have warm season grasses that go dormant. We use perennial ryegrass. It's a beautiful turf from September all the way until the following May. It too dies out. It's a finer textured grass than annual rye.
Once you've made your choice of the perfect lawn grass for your Texas turf, you need to get it planted at the right time. Cool season grasses like ryegrass and fescue are planted in early fall, but for most of us our choices include the warm season grasses. You want to time the planting of those during the warmer months. May 1st to September 15 is ideal in most of Texas. Now let's talk a little bit about the soil preparation. First you want to get rid of all the existing weeds. Spray with a glyphosate, maybe mixed with a broadleaf weed killer to kill all of the weeds that exist out there first. Give the spray about two weeks to do its job. At that point you want to rototill to a depth of three to four inches. You don't have to mix a lot of organic matter in, but you need to establish a good smooth planting bed. The soil preparation is exactly the same no matter how you're going to be planting, whether you're going to be sodding, or planting by hydromulching or seeding. One of the newer ways to start a new lawn is with plugs from the nursery. Many of our lawn grasses are available this way. You checkerboard them across the area and they spread quickly and cover. Of course, no grass will cover well unless you keep it properly watered. And don't be surprised if you have to water new turf grass a couple of times a day in the heat of a Texas summertime. The roots just are very shallow in the soil. You also need to fertilize new grass to get it off to a quick start. Your soil test may show that you need a high phosphate root stimulator plant starter for a new lawn. On the other hand, you may immediately go to a quality slow release 312 ratio fertilizer. I recommend fertilizing at half the recommended rate after the second mowing and then at the recommended rate one month later and thereafter. Choose a good lawn grass variety, plant it carefully and tend to it very regularly. Afterwards, you'll have a beautiful lawn. Now let's take a look at watering established Texas turf. Most of us use hoses and sprinklers when we water our lawn grasses. It's really important to use a quality hose, at least a 5 8 inch diameter, and a good sprinkler that delivers water uniformly over your entire lawn. If you don't have an automatic sprinkling system, you ought to consider one because they are absolutely fabulous ways to keep your lawn looking its best. However, as with manual sprinklers, you need to be sure that you choose a quality system. Good heads, good valves installed carefully and maintained regularly. Now you need to recognize when your lawn needs to be watered. You can set an automatic system on the automatic mode, but let me tell you, it's better to leave it manual and you determine when it's time to water. Turf grasses usually need a couple of inches of water per week in the heat of the summer. Try for no more than two waterings per week. If you're watering more often, you're probably not watering deeply enough. The early morning hours are best because there's less evaporation than during the middle part of the day in the heat of the summer. And plants shouldn't sit overnight in wet conditions, so water in the morning. You have the best water pressure and you're less likely to burn the foliage. You absolutely cannot overestimate the importance of a good fertilization program in keeping your lawn and just as important as a quality fertilizer spreader. I like the broadcast types. I think they do a more uniform job than the old fashioned drop spreaders. You need to have your soil tested and please don't be surprised if it comes back showing a 312 ratio is what you need. Other ways that you can tell when it's time to fertilize your lawn, you need to watch for seed heads forming. If your Bermuda and St. Augustine have seed heads, then it's time to fertilize. If you don't get many clippings when you mow, or if the grass isn't a good dark green color, then it's time to fertilize. You need to use a quality slow release fertilizer that's ever so important, especially the nitrogen. That's really critical if you're in the Don't Bag It Lawn Management Program, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. But choose a quality fertilizer. You time your first feeding for about two weeks after the last killing freeze in the spring. Your last feeding should be about six weeks before the first killing freeze in the fall, probably on eight to ten week intervals during that interim period. Fertilize regularly, take care of your grass, and of course always water right after you fertilize. One other tip that's really important, apply your fertilizer half going north and south, come right back and go east and west, you'll have a uniform pattern. You're going to have a great looking lawn, you're going to have to mow it regularly. In fact, the recommendation is that you mow on four to five day intervals, that way you'll never mow more than one third of the blades off at any one time. Mowing heights will vary a great deal. Of course, hybrid Bermudas, you're going to mow at a quarter to three quarters of an inch. 
common Bermuda at an inch to an inch and a quarter, St. Augustine at two to three inches, zoysias at two to three inches, fescues at three inches, and buffalo grass at three to four inches. You need to make sure that your lawnmower blade is always well sharpened. After about 20 to 30 hours of use, or if you see frayed blades when you mow, that's the time to sharpen the blade. And remember, most importantly here in Texas now, don't bag those clippings, or if you do bag them, use them in the compost. You can't send them to the landfills anymore in most parts of the state. our long growing season here in Texas, our lawns have some problems with insects and diseases. You have to be diligent. You have to watch early on. We have quite a chinch bug outbreak in our lawn and I'm getting ready to treat right now. In fact, you'll notice that the lawn looks very, very dry. If you look closely, you'll see the small black insects with white diamonds on their backs. They're a little bigger than pinheads and they really do a lot of damage. Most general purpose insecticides will control them. Talk to your nurseryman. Bermuda mites are unusual pests in that they're microscopic. If you'll notice, the damaged Bermuda grass runner is very clubby. It just doesn't have the normal long supple stem. You control them with diazinon sprayed down into the lawn. Grubworms can be treated with diazinon or Dursban granules. The important thing is to apply them about six weeks after the main June beetle flight in your neighborhood and then water them deeply into the soil. Texas turf grasses also have several serious disease problems. The most serious of them all is St. Augustine decline, a virus for which we have no chemical control. You have to replant with Raleigh St. Augustine. Gray leaf spot is a fungal disease, and it's a serious problem in our lawn. I have to treat with Daconil fairly regularly to keep it under control. It's especially a problem in the heat of the summer. A cool season disease that shows up generally in the fall is brown patch. It's a leaf disease of St. Augustine. Not generally fatal, but it certainly does weaken the grass. There are several good fungicides available in nurseries that will control brown patch. Weeds are also common visitors to Texas lawns, but weeds are invited guests. They're usually not the problem themselves, but a symptom of some other more serious problem. For example, if you don't water properly or you don't fertilize properly, you don't mow often enough, you get weeds. Categorize your weeds by the various types. Some weeds are annuals, some are perennials, some are grasses, some are broadleafed weeds. Choose your weed killers accordingly. For example, there are some outstanding pre-emergent herbicides like Team and many others. You can also use broadleafed weed killers in a wide assortment of types. You need to identify the weed and then pick the very best weed killer. Here are some of the common weeds in Texas lawns. Spurge is one of the most common in the summertime. It's a little low growing weed. It looks like milkweed. When you pull it up, you get your hands very milky, you know you have spurge. Broadleaf weed killers control it. Roadside aster is a fall blooming weed in really neglected Texas turf grass. Again, you can identify it very easily by its small white or lavender white flowers. Broadleaf weed killers will control it even though it has very narrow leaves. It isn't a grass, so broadleaf weed killers. Dichondra is a very common low growing weed that's very often found under turf grass right on top of the ground. It too is a broadleaf weed, as is this cool season weed, chickweed, also henbit and dandelions. Three cool season weeds that can be eliminated late in the fall or early in the spring with broadleaf herbicides. Now, in the perennial weed category, nutsedge is certainly the most common, and there are now herbicides that will eliminate nutsedge in existing lawn grasses without doing harm to the turf. Dallas grass is a very common perennial grass in much of the state. In fact, it's one of the most serious invaders in St. Augustine. You need to spot treat in St. Augustine or use MSMA or DSMA in Bermuda grass lawns. Crabgrass is certainly the most common weed that we have in Texas turf. Crabgrass is an annual weed and pre-emergence like team will do a wonderful job of eliminating it prior to its ever germinating. The same can be said for graspers, which show up in late spring and through the summer, and again, team or other pre-emergence will eliminate graspers very effectively. So, to summarize on weeds, take really good care of your lawn, and the weeds won't be much of a problem, but there are herbicides that will eliminate almost any of them if you'll just use them at the appropriate times. I'll be back with some closing suggestions right after this message. Another great member of the Purcell family is Stay Green Fertilizers. They come in many different types. You'll find them in independent garden supply dealers all over Texas. 
for a perfect Texas turf, try the Stay Green four-step plan. First, in the spring, apply Stay Green Team. Apply just before the lawn starts to green up again for the spring and repeated in mid to late May, Stay Green Team Pre-Emergent will stop the germination of crabgrass, grass burrs, and other summertime grassy weed seeds. As the lawn starts growing actively, apply Stay Green Weed and Feed. It supplies the nitrogen your lawn needs to green up and start growing. And of course, it features Purcell's famous polyon encapsulation for slow and steady release of its nutrients. It also uses the highly effective broadleafed weed killer Trimec to remove unsightly dandelions, clover, henbit, chickweed, and other broadleafed weeds from your greening lawn. Stay Green Premium Lawn Fertilizer has been blended to the precise recommendations of Texas A&M Research. Again, Polyon is the star. This product is an official part of the Don't Bag It Lawn Management Program. Use it all during the growing season to keep your lawn healthy and vigorous. Finally, in early fall, apply Stay Green Fall Feed Winterizer. You know how important that fall feeding is, and here is the perfect product. Those, then, are the four steps to perfect Texas turf. Look for these fine Stay Green fertilizers and all the other products that carry the Purcell Industries name. Well, that's it. Those are our tips on perfect Texas turf. Hopefully they'll be of help to you. I've really enjoyed the opportunity to show you some of my ideas and I hope you'll find that it's easy to have a great looking lawn in Texas. Folks make a lot more work out of it than they need to. Remember how important that lawn is in the resale value of your home and the beauty that you provide to all around you. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy gardening.